Hello, I'm Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I want to take a little quick look at the current Seasonal Super God Fest, which is currently live in North America. So, Seasonal Super God Fest are God Fests that feature select seasonal cards, and historically speaking, top rarity seasonal cards have oftentimes been chases, which oftentimes means people would not roll in those seasonal events and exchange God Fest exclusive fodder for that respective card. Obviously that doesn't apply to every single seasonal rare top rarity card out there, but that was kind of the general consensus and like kind of the pattern that I would tend to follow for myself in terms of like stone management and when I roll and not roll. So whenever a seasonal super god fest comes out and I like the seasonal cards featured and the rolling rates are strong, I tend to roll them that. And if that was the case nowadays, this current Seasonal Super God Fest would fit most of those criteria quite well. We have extremely good chances of rolling something of value because 51% chance to get any God Fest exclusive, 8% chance for three different seasonal cards total, and then Pantheon's rounded out at only 41%. So the rolling rates are definitely in our favor, but at this exact point in time, I feel like the meta, so to speak, for rolling and spending magic stones has actually shifted a bit away from seasonals. Obviously seasonals still have incredibly high value, but I feel like the meta has shifted towards collaborations. And it's not just like rolling in collaborations, it's rolling heavily in collaborations because you need to roll an entire team worth of collaboration cards to take full advantage of the collab badge because the collaboration badge is a huge power creep by comparison to our regular solo mode badges. So in order to roll in these collaborations heavy enough and hard enough and deep enough, we need a large amount of magic stones. And that's where I feel like we're gonna be spending most of our stones nowadays because we we should probably be like waiting, not rolling in every collab unless you're able to purchase stones more freely, but if you just get the trickle through seasonal quests, etc., you need to like skip events, like completely skip them outright, and then save for an event that has good stuff feature where you can build entire teams from that also has the special collab badge and then roll heavily in it. So good examples of that is Gung Ho Alternate Journey, where you can build an incredible like Scalibur UA team or like pastel teams as well with just those collaboration cards if you roll deep enough. And then conversely, the current slime collab features something similar with a couple of outstanding leaders that can definitely utilize all the collaboration cards. So because of all that in mind, I am much less inclined to roll in Seasonal Super God Fest if I have an established account. And that is the case for both of my accounts. I've rolled quite a bit over the past 10 plus years. So I have a pretty deep box. Godfest exclusives at this point in time tend to just simply be trade fodder. But for the most part, trade fodder and monster exchanging has become weaker because lots of the highly desirable cards out there are not actually monster exchangeable, which means you have to roll them. So in the past, I would roll in these super Godfest or seasonal super Godfest, hope I get the seasonal card, or just pick up Godfest exclusive fodder to trade in for as monster exchanging, but monster exchanging is less strong than it used to be even just a couple of years ago. So for myself, despite the fact that these rolling rates are quite spectacular, I'm gonna be skipping it personally. Now, this is mostly because I have a deep monster box. I've picked up, I think, virtually every Godfest exclusive for the most part at this point in time, and I do have Halloween Paimon on one of my accounts, which is the most valuable of the three seasonal cards featured, and unfortunately, one of the seasonal cards is Christmas Tamadra, whom I don't think is particularly great. But on the other hand, if you're someone without a super deep monster box, you can definitely benefit from this event because rolling rates are in your favor. And unlike collabs where you should be rolling tons to get enough to populate in team from that event, you can roll here as much as you have or want to and hopefully pick up some Godfest exclusives to actually utilize because they still have value Godfest exclusives. Some of them have nice weapon assist. Some can still make teams that are vi pretty viable for a good chunk of content. So basically in summary, I am personally skipping this. I feel like this is an event, even though it has nice rates that can be skipped by players with deeper monster boxes, and instead we just keep saving for future collaborations where we need to actually acquire as many cards as possible to utilize the badges efficiently. So that being said, let me know what you lovely ladies and gentlemen think about this current Godfest in the comment section down below. Do you think it's actually worth rolling in because Halloween Paimon is one of the best weapon assists still in the game, and I guess Valentine's Thulia is still a respectable like utility sub with her double L, double cross, six enhanced hard orbs, blind resist, cloud resist, 
active skill that gives a universal buff attack rcv movement time seven by six board and one turn haste she does quite a few different things quite well so i would like to have her obviously more paimons is never a bad thing and then christmas tamadra is a sad disappointment maybe next christmas he'll get better but regardless of all that hopefully all you lovely ladies and gentlemen have a truly fantastic day i wish best luck in your own pad adventures and happy puzzling